And with that, we have a quorum. Um, so we'll call this uh, hearing to order. I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to the Small Business Committee organizational meeting. Uh, and I want to welcome all our returning members and some new members, uh, obviously, the committee. I know you're very excited to dive in and get to work. Um, before introducing the Republican members, I would like to take a moment to thank Ranking Member uh, Velazquez uh, for her dedication and hard work, obviously, on behalf of all small businesses. Ranking Member Velazquez, uh, I want to continue that cordial working environment uh, that we established in the 112th Congress and before that, uh, for that matter, too. Um, there are five new Republican members on the committee and one former member who has obviously seen the light and come back to us. Um, but I'd like to introduce those members. Mr. Holskamp is a rancher uh, from Kansas with a Ph.D. from American University. Um, we have Mr. Schweikert, uh, who has a long history of public service in Arizona, uh, in addition to being a small business owner. Our returning member that I mentioned earlier is a fellow Missourian, uh, Mr. Luke DeMeyer, who is a farmer and he's been in the banking and insurance industry. Um, three of the new members are freshmen, uh, Mr. Bentvolio, a rancher from Michigan, Mr. Collins, uh, who is a small business owner and Erie County executive, and Mr. Rice, who started his own tax law firm in Myrtle Beach and served on the Horry County uh, Council. And I expect that uh, the experience that we have in all of our members uh, as small business owners is going to be very significant uh, and a lot of value to the committee as we work to develop policies uh, which will enable small businesses to expand uh, and create jobs. Um, I'd also like to welcome back the members who served on the committee during the 112th Congress, uh, Mr. Shabbat from Ohio, Mr. King from Iowa, uh, Mr. Kaufman from Colorado, Mr. Mulvaney from uh, South Carolina, Mr. Tipton from Colorado, and Ms. Herrera Butler from Washington, uh, and Mr. Hanna from New York. Um, and I now yield to, uh, yield to Ranking Member Velasquez for introduction of her members. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I just would like to thank you um, for the work that we have done in the past and looking forward to work with you. As I mentioned and I said it uh, repeatedly, there is no Republican or Democratic approach when it comes to deal uh, with a small business need. And uh, looking forward to having a, a productive uh, legislative session. Um, we have, Mr. Chairman, an exceptional roster of Democratic members joining uh, the committee this Congress. They hail from across the country and bring a diverse set of experiences that will prove helpful as the committee moves forward. Uh, returning members such as uh, Representative Yvette Clark from New York. She's a fellow New Yorker and Brooklyn uh, native, and I'm proud to have her returning to the committee. In previous Congresses, she has been an important voice on the committee for female and minority entrepreneurs. Uh, also returning, Ms. Judy Chu from California. Uh, last Congress, she served as the ranking Democrat of the Contracting and the Workforce Subcommittee. In that role, she has helped spearhead many of the committee's efforts to improve the procurement process for small businesses. Um, Ms. Janice, uh, Representative Janice Hahn from California, also returning to the committee. She has been a champion of green technology. She has already been an important voice on the committee, and I'm pleased to welcome her back. Uh, new members, uh, Representative Donald Payne, Jr., uh, from New Jersey. Mr. Uh, Payne comes from Newark, New Jersey. This is his first term on the committee. As a former city council member, I am sure he has been involved in local economic development issues, and I look forward uh, to hearing about his experiences. Uh, Ms. Grace uh, Mann from New York, our next addition to the committee, uh, is not only coming from New York, but she is a dear friend. Grace Mann joins us from New York's 6th Congressional District, which is next to my district and located in Queens. While in the State Assembly, Ms. Mann made helping small business owners achieve their American dream a top priority, and I'm pleased that she's joining us. Mr. Brad Schneider uh, from Illinois um, joins us from outside Chicago, Illinois. As someone who previously consulted for family-owned businesses, I'm sure that he will be an asset to the committee, and I look forward to hearing his views. Also joining us, uh, Representative Ron Barber from Arizona. Um, he comes from Tucson, Arizona. He himself is a small business owner. Together, he and his wife run Toy Traders Stork Nets, which specialize in selling and trading used toys. I'm sure his real-world experience will benefit the committee. 
and uh, we have a representative, Ann McLean Coster, uh, from New Hampshire. Like many committee members, she too has a background starting and running her own business. And uh, joining us also is Mr. Uh, Patrick Murphy from Florida. Having spent time both in the accounting field and in running his family's uh, construction business, <coughs> I'm certain he too will bring valuable experience to the committee. I'm pleased to see our returning members of the committee and as well as our new additions. Welcome to all of you, and I thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member. Um, although we do have uh, some policy differences, I firmly believe that uh, there are many issues in which we're going to find a lot of common ground uh, that's going to help small businesses by eliminating unnecessary programs and regulations, reducing redundancies in government, and by far ensuring that the Small Business Administration carries out policies that are dictated by Congress rather than devising its own and a lot of times expensive uh, untested experiments to assist entrepreneurs. I believe that the rules package and the oversight package under consideration today is going to lay the groundwork for finding those areas that we have in common while maintaining the highest levels of civility uh, when we discuss our differences. And with that, I'll yield to Ranking Member Velasquez for opening. Thank you, Chairman Graves. Um, as our, our nation's uh, economic recovery continues, this should be a busy and productive time for the committee. We all know the vital role entrepreneurs play in the broader economy. In that regard, entrepreneurs the work of this committee in fostering an environment where small businesses can flourish is critical. Small businesses remain a cornerstone of our economy, and we will do whatever it takes uh, to support them. Generating nearly two-thirds of net new jobs over the last 15 years, small firms are the innovators and drivers of economic progress. During tough economic times, entrepreneurship is also important in giving dislocated workers opportunities to go into business for themselves and support their families. As we move forward, Mr. Chairman, we must make sure that small businesses are given the resources they need to prosper. And I look forward to continuing our efforts on behalf of small entrepreneurs during the 113th Congress a year back. We will move into the rules package, and I want to thank the minority and majority staffs for their hard work and cooperation in putting this package to, uh, uh, together. And I will highlight some of the changes in the rules um, that I think are going to provide some greater transparency. The rules package for the 112th Congress created uh, a lot of transparency and it protected the rights of the minority. And in order to maintain that transparency and, and, uh, uh, and uh, cohesiveness, the rules package for the 113th Congress does not diverge from the rules that we used in the 112th Congress except for two ways. Um, the rules reduce the number of testimony copies required by the witnesses and the size of the subcommittee, the second thing is the size of the subcommittee is going to shrink from, uh, to six Republican and four Democrat members. Uh, however, we will still maintain the ability of any member to attend any subcommittee hearing uh, as long as they just request to do so. And now I recognize Ranking Member Velasquez for any remarks on the rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our committee rules determine how the committee operates. More importantly, by laying out a fair process, they help ensure that all points of view are considered. On this committee, we have members all across the country representing our largest cities, rural areas, small towns, and everything in between. By taking an inclusive approach, the committee benefits from hearing the different perspectives of all members, regardless of party affiliation or ideology. Ultimately, this results in not just a fairer process, but also a better, stronger legislative product. A committee that is run openly and fairly is a committee that works. It is my hope that the rules we consider today will make that happen. Through their adoption, we will kick off the new Congress with a sense of comedy and bipartisanship, which I hope to see sustained moving forward. I yield back. Are there any other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on the rules package? Um, seeing none, the committee now moves to consideration of the rules package. The clerk, uh, please read the title of the document. Rules and Procedures Adopted by the Committee on Small Business, United States House of Representatives, 113th Congress. I would ask unanimous consent that the rules package be considered as read and open for amendment in its entirety. Uh, does any member seek recognition for the purpose of offering an amendment? Uh, seeing none, the question is on adopting the rules. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. 
The rules for the Small Business <coughs> Committee in the 113th Congress uh, are adopted, and the staff is authorized to make any technical and grammatical changes. Um, now we'll move to the oversight plan, um, which is a second order of business. Um, the plan represents the agenda for the committee during the 113th Congress, and I want to thank Ranking Member Velazquez again for her input into the oversight plan. Uh, I believe the plan adopted in the 112th uh, was comprehensive and enabled the committee to focus on ensuring that the government does not hinder the ability of small businesses to create jobs. And as a result, the oversight plan prepared for the 113th Congress is similar to the one adopted in the 112th. Um, despite its overall similarity, there are a few key uh, additions to the plan which we are considering today. The primary additions are oversight of legislation enacted in the 112th Congress that affects small business, including changes to the Small Business Innovative Research Program, uh, government contracting programs overseen by the SBA, and approved capital access for entrepreneurs associated with the implementation of the Jumpstart Our Small Business Startups Act. Uh, at this point, I yield to Ranking Member Velasquez for any comments she might have. Uh, well, I would like to uh, commend the Chair for producing a thoughtful uh, document. The plan calls for greater oversight of the Small Business Administration and, in particular, its contracting and lending initiatives. In the past, this committee has vigorously investigated fraud in the SBA's contracting programs. We know that when unscrupulous actors misuse these initiatives, legitimate small businesses lose out on federal procurement contracting. In that regard, it is vital that the committee continue exposing fraud, waste, and abuse in these initiatives. In recent years, the committee has been vigilant in examining the SBA disaster assistance efforts. Thanks to our work, Congress passed and the SBA is implementing reforms to improve these programs. In the wake of Hurricane Sandy, I hope we keep a close eye on how well these programs function. The oversight plan delineates several programs for review and possible determination. Uh, Our past work has revealed that there are agency programs that are duplicative and an unwise use of taxpayers' dollars. It has always been a part of our core responsibility to carefully examine such instances and consider alternative options as well as their elimination. This is central to why I have always advocated for a two-year authorization period for the Small Business Administration and its programs. Congress should be regularly seeking feedback from agencies and evaluating what is working and what is not collaborating with my colleagues on these matters, and making the SBA more efficient must remain a top priority for this panel. This, this committee has often served as a voice for entrepreneurs on Capitol Hill during this larger policy debate, and it is my hope that we will continue playing that vital role. Again, I commend the chairman on the development of this oversight plan, and I yield back. Thanks, uh, Nidia. Um, are there any other members who wish to be heard on the oversight plan? Um, seeing none, the committee uh, now moves for the consideration of the overnight uh, oversight plan. Uh, the clerk, please read the title of the document. Oversight plan of the Committee on Small Business for the 113th Congress. I'd ask unanimous consent that the oversight plan be considered as read and open for amendment in its entirety. Does any member seek recognition for the purpose of offering an amendment? Uh, seeing no amendments, the question is on adopting the oversight package. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. The oversight plan for the Small Business Committee in the 113th Congress is adopted. The committee staff is authorized to make any technical and grammatical changes to the plan. I'd like to thank everybody uh, for being here uh, today and look forward to working with you. And with that, uh, the meeting on the committee on the small business uh, is adjourned.